Hey guys, it's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe, and I just wanted to go over uh, some of the Sega CD packaging I've encountered over the years with my collection. I have a complete United States set. Most of the set is boxed. Some of it is not. Uh, some of it is loose discs and jewel cases. But I wanted to kind of just go over really briefly some of the different packaging that the Sega CD had over the years, the variations, and what came in the box. So. Um, I guess we'll start out with what I would say is probably the most boring of all of it, and that is the kind of jewel cased Sega CD games. They're not jewel cases actually, but they're, uh, you know, these cardboard cases. This one's a double pack. Here's Soul Feast. And then this was the, the kind of strange one of the bunch Colors of Modern Rock. So, um,. What, what this is, is, is especially the rock paintings and the colors of modern rock, these are virtual VCR type games or CD pluses or whatever they're called, CD plus G. It's just uh, music with uh, graphics that go across the screen. Uh, I know there was a Jimi Hendrix song on one of them. I think it's on this one. Yeah, there it is. Jimi Hendrix smash hits. You probably can't see it because of the light. But um, it's kind of like a karaoke disc almost. It, plays like a little graphic on the screen and plays the music. So these were the uh, the cases they used for these. As I said, this is this looks very similar to the one they did with Sherlock Holmes along with the Sega Classics discs. That comes in a 4-in-1 and a 5-in-1 pack. And then Soul Feast also looks similar but one-sided obviously. Inside, you know, one, one disc is what I meant to say. Um, <clears throat> then the Sega CD did things like this, which was sort of the standard for Sega CD initially. Uh, the cardboard boxes that are difficult to keep in great shape because, you know, things bend. And uh, these came with... This, this case was one I think I put in there. I don't think this originally had this case. I think it had just a normal uh, thin jewel case. I actually obviously got this from a rental store close down in my area. Nice uh, booklets here. Put that away in a little bit. And then, um, let's see, let's see. Then they went to, uh, to things like this. They went to these Sega Saturn, Sega CD uh, hard plastic clamshell cases, and these are my favorite. Um, I thought they were the most distinct looking. I really liked when Sega Saturn adopted these too, but I think that was because they had so much overstock with the uh, with the Sega CD that they, you know, didn't want them to go to waste. So inside here, you got the little foam protector that everyone knows and loves to hold the game in place. You got the uh, well, this is a working designs one, obviously. So they they always really took extra care. You know, they always did these like shiny holographic type covers. color manuals, they usually included maps or posters and stuff. So uh, working designs always always do that little extra bit of love in, in their uh, in their games. Or in their releases I should say. Um, then we have something like this here, where Night Trap came in those original you know cardboard cases and then got re-released in another cardboard case. Um, I don't think this ever had a plastic clamshell. Uh, I thought initially that this was the original and this was the re-release because of the, you know, um, ESRB rating, but I'm not so sure about that. I mean, this could have been stuck on later. It doesn't look like, you know, I don't know. So here we got, these are my my times at the old instruction manual looking thing. I had this, I think this was the original case that I have it in here with the, the jewel cases. And then they re-released it um, like this. And I, I hate these things. I think that they scratch discs. I find CDs and DVDs to be very fragile in terms of protection. So I always put them in jewel cases. And uh, we have the booklet here. For, uh, this is my times again, I guess. For this version of Night Trap. And I used to love how digital pictures would put little, like, advertisements in here and stuff. Sorry if the camera's a little too low here. Get this crap out of the way. I love how they always put these little 
I would like just read through these. I always thought these were really cool. Uh, it's kind of like an old Sega ad, you know? T-shirts and crap like that. So I always enjoyed those. And these boxes weren't so bad. They were a little more hardy than the original releases. Um, then we got the one-offs that happened, or two-offs here and there, you know, very rare. You got the Sega CD 32, Sega CD 32X CD releases, um, like Fahrenheit, which includes both the versions. Um, there was a couple other games like that, I'm trying to remember. Some were just loose one-offs, and then other ones were ones that, here we go, Surgical Strike, that was the other one I was thinking of. I think that was a Brazilian-only release that only came out on 32X CD in Brazil, um, but I think it may have even been released by Tech Toy, but um, that's an underrated game, by the way. And uh, then, you know, for the most part, they came in separate cases, either a Sega CD case or a Sega CD 32X CD case, but this worked in conjunction with both the Sega CD and the 32X. You'd have to have both pieces of hardware, and I thought that was kind of cool they included both in this release. Then you have a couple of these that came out on the Sega CD. Another one that comes to mind is Hook and Three Ninjas, and um, Ultraverse Prime, and was it Microcosm, I think? Came in a, du a dual case as well. The, co the little foam is a little thinner. And up here, if you look at this, comes with the booklets for both games. This never came out on the Sega CD, but I do like that movie. As I said in one of my previous videos, great underrated game nobody talks about, Frankenstein. Then you have the unreleased stuff that GoodDealGames.com purchased the rights to, you know, fixed and tweaked and finished and whatever else, and then they released. And they initially came out in jewel cases like this, this is Star Strike, as you see, printed label, you know, okay shape, okay, okay quality. Um, they're burns, I don't think they're pressed, um, you know, just thicker kind of cardboard here and um, one of my games doesn't work anymore actually Citizen X doesn't work anymore um, so I ended up just burning a copy off the internet just to have it and then have my original so I guess the quality of the discs probably wasn't so great for good deal games or my Sega CD just has trouble reading burns I'm not really sure which it is and then last but not least good deal games came out with packaging like this which was in their later releases like Giant Mnemonic um, I also believe the Smurfs, I think, off the top of my head, um, Battle Frenzy, and uh, such. So we have Burning Fists for Striker. Again, a, just a regular disc here with a printed, uh, printed artwork. And these were games, as I said, that were never released, that they had purchased the rights to and then sold themselves. So everything's kind of homemade there. But, so these are the, uh, the different variations, as I said, of Sega CD boxes over the years with the, the cardboard cases, the clamshells, these little jammies here. So, hopefully you'll like this little trip through time and, uh, I don't know, maybe learn something about the little variations in cases over the years in Sega CD. Otherwise, most people would probably find this video pretty boring. Unless your name is Keithy Huntington, then you might like it. So, uh, thanks guys for watching. It's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe. Be good.